Ливии. Hazardous marine life. Marine envenomations by vertebrates by Joseph Baker and Paul Auerbach. Many marine vertebrates are equipped with toxin-based defense mechanisms. While caution, a healthy respect and distance are usually adequate protection from these creatures, accidents obviously happen, leaving some divers envenomated and potentially seriously medically affected. So knowing how to provide first aid in these situations can hasten recovery and prevent complications. The following general treatment principles apply to envenomation. For the most part, marine vertebrate venoms are comprised of many bioactive chemicals, including one or more proteins. The toxic effects, such as pain, manifest through the destruction of local tissue and irritation or disruption of the person's peripheral nervous system. In general, treatment goals are to remove as much of the active venom as possible and to reduce the effects of the toxins. Pain is best reduced by irrigating the affected area with hot water, about 45 degrees centigrade, to the level of tolerance to avoid thermal burns. In addition to the pain reduction, it also offers a first step followed by scrubbing and extracting of the spines, all of which add to remove the venom and the potentially infectious organic foreign material. Symptoms may result from the direct toxic effects of the venom. In addition, the venom may cause allergic reactions in a way similar to bee stings. The reaction for some people may include only pain and swelling, while others can develop dangerous respiratory distress. Most allergic reactions fortunately only involve the skin with swelling, rash and itchiness. But if they escalate, they can include breathing distress. At that time, first aid support may be necessary with injectable adrenaline or epinephrine. Also provide inhaled oxygen and antihistamines such as diphenhydramine or Benadryl and a steroid such as prednisolone. Regardless of what first aid is administered, any patient with a serious allergic reaction should be treated by a medical practitioner as soon as possible. Here follow a couple of examples of marine vertebrates with the potential for envenomation. Stingrays. Stingrays are beautiful and graceful creatures, but their tails carry barbed spines with two ventrolateral venom-containing grooves. In other words, towards the bottom and side. When they're provoked, the stingray thrusts its tail into the victim and produces a deep, jagged laceration. Removing the spine is often dangerous because the serrated barbs actually produce significant tissue damage and bleeding may occur when the spine is removed. Attacks usually occur on the foot or lower leg uh, because they are inadvertently stepped on. Stingray spines impaled deeply into any tissue, especially into the abdomen or chest, should be removed only in a controlled medical environment, such as an emergency room. Stingray envenomation can cause significant pain, but it's rarely fatal. The effects include local tissue damage, as well as neurological and musculoskeletal symptoms. Immediate treatment should focus on washing the wound, at approximately 45 degrees centigrade, which can provide relief for up to 90 minutes. Remove as much spine and foreign material as possible and scrub the wound with soap and water. Again, use heated fresh water. Wounds should be left open unless they can be packed surgically and bandaged in a way to reduce bleeding. If significant tissue damage has occurred, or if the injured diver has an impaired immune system, for instance with diabetes, HIV, cancer, or regular use of immunosuppressant drugs, then antibiotics should be considered. Scorpionfish envenomation. This includes lionfish, stonefish, and scorpionfish. After stingrays, the scorpionfish family is responsible for the second most number of envenomations of all other marine vertebrates. The group includes 
lionfish, scorpionfish and stonefish, with lionfish having the smaller spines that are least toxic. On the flip side, stonefish have thicker spines that are very toxic. In general, severity of envenomation depends on various factors, including where it occurs, the number of stings and the underlying health of the person stung. Lionfish stings can be painful but are very rarely fatal. Stonefish stings are very painful and there are a number of cases where deaths occurred. When the symptoms exceed the localized pain, they may include nausea, vomiting, weakness, and in some cases, even paralysis. First aid for scorpion fish envenomations follows the same protocol as stingrays. Irrigate and immerse the area with hot water, remove foreign material, leave the wound open, and if it becomes infected, administer antibiotics. Specific antivenom is available for stonefish stings in certain parts of Australia. It's helpful in the majority of cases where it is used, but is not always available. And it may cause serious allergic reactions. Catfish and weaver fish stings. Catfish and weaver fish are two other fish capable of significant envenomations. They're found in both fresh and salt water and have dorsal and pectoral fins, all of which can produce punctures, especially when the creatures are handled. The venom of most catfish is considered to be fairly mild, giving symptoms comparable to a bee sting. Weaver fish are somewhat aggressive and some of the few fish that may actually attack divers without provocation. However, most stings occur when divers or swimmers step on the fish, which is typically buried in the sand awaiting its prey. Weaver fish venom is toxic to the nervous system, so symptoms are primarily neurological in nature. Itching, tingling and severe pain at the wound site are also common. Systemic effects are less common but may be serious, involving respiratory difficulty or paralysis. If treating catfish or weaver fish stings, Follow the same first aid principles as for scorpion fish. The best approach to all marine vertebrate envenomations is to avoid contact with potentially toxic creatures. If an encounter occurs, remember that most marine vertebrate envenomations involve significant local pain and tissue swelling with minor damage. All of this may respond to hot water immersion. If the person seems more than minimally ill, or if you're in doubt, seek immediate medical attention and care.